Let's talk about Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. So Cranford is a classic. It was originally published in Charles Dickens's magazine The Rambler uh, from in, in the early 1850s and then a do-up version, a compilated version, was put out in 1853. Gaskell was a collaborator of Dickens and uh, fits very much in there. There is some humorous commentary in this book on the qualities of Mr Dickens's work. It, it is a classic in more than one sense. It's not just that it was published uh, before the early 20th century or the middle of the 20th century, but it's also uh, that it's seen as a classic. Uh, probably in Britain is the most famous name of a story by Elizabeth Gaskell with a very popular television programme attached. Uh, it's not necessarily her most famous novel previously, historically, uh, compared to Mary Barton or Ruth or North and South. However, nowadays I think it's, it's probably the most well-known of her novels, at least in Britain. What's, what is it about? Well, that's a, a hard thing to say. Um, it's a, a portrait of genteel poverty and intertwined lives in a 19th century village. Uh, really what it's about is a number of old women who live in a country village and who live fairly quiet lives with their own natural domestic dramas, things that happen, talking about their past, their tragedies, their difficulties. It's from the perspective. It's a third person limited perspective. Uh, sorry, a, a first person limited perspective from a younger visitor, uh, Mary, I think her name is, who is essentially Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, the narrator has opinions about things, uh, but is largely a sort of a pr a, 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 an ink uh, pad on which our views are put. You know, we, we, we stamp in and we see the world through her eyes um, and, uh, you know, we are given our opinions through her. So there's not really a plot, basically. There are a series of connected episodes as befits its magazine roots. However, they are they, they build on each other. They gradually develop um, on top of each other. Now, it's worth saying it's stylistically similar, and this is certainly a, a recommendation for me, to Jane Austen, um, which sounds funny. You think, well, it's a lot later. It's about these older people. However, the ironic observational comedy, the dryness of the humour, um, the slight distance of the narrator whilst also being very gossipy and involved, those are all very similar. Uh, probably the author I found most similar to Austen in stylistic terms. However, as I say, the cast is older, um, though there are romances. Uh, <laughs> there's a jokes early on about what trouble men are in this village run by women, but nonetheless, there are romances and dealings with men. Uh, but the stakes seem lower in immediate terms because there's no issue of marrying for a fortune or, um, oh, well, when are you going to have all these children? Because, of course, most of the women are past having children. It's also intentionally tedious. That sounds like a funny thing to say. Uh, but here's an example of one incident. Uh, several of the women increasingly, you know, really via hysteria, uh, get the impression that there is a burgling crew in town. They don't know what's happening, they think everyone's being robbed. There's all these stories coming up about being robbed or about attempted robberies and about danger in the streets, but there is literally no evidence for this that's presented. No one knows w where these stories have come from really, no one knows how accurate they are, uh, and the reveal of what's going on uh, really moves the plot in a different direction, and it's a very interesting direction. Uh, but that's what I mean, it's tedious in the sense of it's just the day-to-day -day actions of ordinary people. Uh, in this case, mostly widowed or, or spinster older women in a country village in the middle, well, really in the slightly earlier half of the 19th century. That's when it's set. One interesting thing is that there are political overtones um, and, and undertones, or both, or, or one or the other, or whatever you want to say. A big theme is certainly city versus country. Our narrator comes from the city, from Drumble, probably Manchester. Uh, and her father is a Drumble businessman. The people in the country are poorer than the people in the city. The people in Cranford, uh, based probably on Nutsford in Cheshire, they are poorer, um, but they're also more traditional. And there's this tension between the previous order and the new order. The genteel poverty of people who 
um, kind of <laughs> conspire never to demand too much of each other financially. They all pretend the reason they're not putting on an extra candle is, is sheer, mere waste or they've, they've always had excellent night vision or whatever the joke might be. But nonetheless, we are meant to side with these slightly ridiculous country figures. We're meant to see that uh, this rural life of stability, of um, of neighbourliness, of knowing each other well and for long periods of time is superior to the capitalistic excess of Trumbull. And this is important for Gaskell. She's, uh, she was a Christian socialist. That doesn't mean she was a Marxist or a communist. Uh, she was really from a different tradition. Uh, but she sees the whole thing as uh, being about virtue, I guess, and vice. Um, and that both happens between country and city, but also inside Cranford. She addresses class in Cranford. These women are largely upper class or upper middle class. There are a lot of social rules. Um, and though this is often ridiculed, sometimes it's genuinely brought up as a matter of moral peril. At the same time, there's just a degree to which Gaskell also wants to reflect on the virtues of class, on the noblesse oblige, on the responsibilities these women take for each other and for their neighbours, um, and how they use their wealth to help others very often. Uh, there are extreme examples of snobbery and negative behaviour to do with class, uh, but there are also very different behaviours. And so her view on class is subtle. Um, it would, if you wanted the philosophic side of it, it would fit in with some of Marx's observations about the feudal classes before the bourgeois classes, but really it's very different. It's a very subtle book. It's a lot more subtle than North and South or Mary Barton or Ruth. Um, it's it's a silly book intentionally, it's a funny book intentionally, but it's just a serious deep down. Um, it's also short. Um, my edition, excluding a kind of post-word essay, which is worth reading if you get the right edition, is 198 pages long. It's really very short. There is, on the whole, everything's very organic, natural. Incidents emerge naturally, emotions emerge naturally, drama emerges naturally. Sometimes the drama isn't what you're expecting. Uh, sometimes you think, oh, well, I didn't really think that would happen or that person would do that. Um, not because it's unnatural, but because you're expecting really a far more novelistic plot when it was far more episodic originally. However, that doesn't offend. In fact, it works to upset our requirements of the novel. Um, the one thing, there is a one deus ex toward the end, one deus ex machina, one convenience. However, it's interesting when you realise the worldview uh, the 19th century Victorian Christian worldview that Gaskell has, um, it's maybe more natural, maybe less surprising that this particular deus ex comes up, how it comes up, why it comes up. Um, and it works, I think, it's something which reflects the worldview of the author, even if it does not reflect our worldview. So though there is that, and that could be a point of criticism, um, I think it's largely excusable. I, the final point I think I'd say, though, is that, though I could say there's lots of humour, there's a class commentary, there's country versus city commentary, um, there's um, this plot that develops over the instances of the women and their various triumphs and tragedies and how they deal with each other and their neighbours. At the same time, I think the point is fundamentally, Cranford is a story uh, about human decency. It's about kindnesses that cause the very mountains to shake. Um, it is not a book that relies heavily on uh, twists of plot is not a, a book that relies even on its undoubted humour and um, its undoubted political insight. Rather, it's a book that uh, relies on its characters and their character, the way in which they treat each other, the way in which they love their neighbours. And so for all those reasons, I would recommend Cranford. I think it's very worth reading if you want a short, readable classic, uh, which covers a lot of bases in a surprisingly subtle way. What did you think? Tell me in the comments. Till next time.